Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about the trials and tribulations of getting this Detroit Diesel 471 started and it's proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Lots of jobs to do today, but uh, let's start by uh, quieting the chickens down so you can hear me talk. Have you come up to the workshop deciding that it's time for breakfast, have you? All right, hang on. Come on, hop along. Turn into a peg leg, haven't you? There you go. And while they're busy eating their breakfast, I'll get my breakfast. Sorry guys, it's a fair swap. All right, this is the old water pipe, which was a brazed copper pipe. Um, same size each end, so the hose clamp was just kind of done up tight, even though it was too small, like kind of significantly smaller, to be honest. Don't know if you can see that with the black. Anyway, uh, it's also a little bit short. And I think the reason it was short is because there used to be a bit of hose, a 90 degree bend, a bit of hose. Now I've just got a bent bit of hose. So what I do have though, is I found this at a steel supply store and it's already beveled for welding and everything and it doesn't have a reduced diameter. It's not sort of bent as such, so it's uh, perfect for what I want. And it's kind of right here. Like I can just put a bead around that, I reckon, and uh, that'll be our reduction. Then I've got a small amount of pipe, the same size, just to extend it enough to get the hose onto it. So that's the plan. The rods I'm going to use are these Ostar 16TC. Um, they're a low hydrogen rod, which I think I got for the hull on recommendation. And I was running some of them yesterday, doing a few more hull repairs, and I really, really like them. So I'm going to use these for the pipe. Okay, going to start with the reduction, just do a few tacks around, clean it up, then we'll weld right round. Excuse my dodgy arc strike up the bend, but you can see it's got this really sort of glossy black slag on it, which is really common with these low hydrogen rods. All right, chip that off, clean it up, and we'll go right round. So here it is, I don't think it's gonna leak. We will be pressure testing the whole cooling system before we fire it up, but so far so good. All right, now just this little extension for the hose onto here, and that's what we were after. Oh, and I keep forgetting to mention, Long time ago, somebody left this capstan at the boat when it was on the hard stand. So thank you. I'm sure I'll find a good use for it down the track when we start getting more rigging gear on the boat. Okay, over here, we've got to complete the fittings from this coolant manifold into the water jacket of the exhaust manifold. To do this, I have somewhere, if I haven't lost it already. Here's the plate that goes here. So what we need to do is get the gasket, the plate on, put a bit of thread sealant, put this adapter in, then we can put our tail, right angle tail, into this bit and then connect it to the other bit with the hose. These are the two that we drilled out. All right, gasket on, plate on, couple of new bolts. Just got to make this hose a bit shorter so it doesn't kink. Uh, 
Okay, new fittings, new hose, new clamps. A uh, couple of bolts missing here that I've ordered, so let's whack those in. All right, this I don't understand. This one went in just fine. This one just pushes in. This tightened up really nicely, same bolts. I don't think there's any chance they were supposed to be two different bolts. Same depth from here to here. That's kind of weird. This cover here is where the blower drive shaft goes through. So let's pop this off. Looks like it may have actually been sealed up. Uh, but uh, that's okay. We'll see. We either tear the gasket and we need to make a new one or order a new one or it'll be good to go and we'll just spray some Heilemar on it. Well, the gasket's certainly toast. Okay, so this spins with the timing gears and everything on here and shaft goes into these splines then comes through here and drives the blower so let's put that shaft in Ooh, nice shiny new one nothing obviously wrong with the old one but i'll keep that as a spare because these are designed to shear as a bit of a fail safe there's a square end here i was under the impression the newer ones had threads so you could wind something in and pull the shaft out but uh at least that means you can get something square in there and kind of jam it and pull it out. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on this first just to make it go in a bit more easily. This whole area is filled with oil so it gets lubricated that way. Having a bit of leverage here helps you keep the forward end up a little bit and get it in. And there we go, it felt like it went in so we'll just tap it. Here we just got a little retaining clip. goes into a groove, you can see it's sort of spinning around there so that it can't come back out. Alright, we're going to need a new gasket for here, so I'll either make one or order one, I'll see how long it takes. A couple of viewers commented that uh, with these sort of aftermarket dipsticks, there's a little Allen key here so you can tape the dipstick out, cut this end, put it back in as a way of adjusting it to be the correct length so we don't have to do any dodgy marking at all. So, perfect. Uh, other people were saying don't trust the factory dipstick either. Look, it's probably good advice, you know. I won't cut it now. According to the factory dipstick, it needs to be an inch shorter, but I will just, you know, fill it with the factory amount, run it so that the, uh, you know, the pumps and galleries fill, let it drain back down in the sump pan for a while, check the level and mark it as that. So that's my plan. Another good point is how does it sit in the boat? Because that's how I'll be marking it. So it's worth actually putting a spirit level on the rails in the boat and getting a sense of what angle it'll be at because you know that's how I'll be measuring it in the future. Whether it's designed to be level or not, that's the context it's gonna be in. So definitely something else to consider before we start cutting this and cutting it too short. All right, let's get the tape off this fuel filter housing. I'm just gonna test fit the fuel filter I've ordered just to make sure it's right, because these are the sorts of things that are gonna come and bite me come uh, fire up day. Before it gets installed permanently, I'm gonna put some diesel on the O-ring and fill it with diesel first, but for now, I'm just checking it's the right one. I'm gonna go get a uh, jerry can of diesel this afternoon so we can fill this and have some diesel to run the engine as well. Now, here, this is the housing, the aluminum housing that I killed by putting in caustic soda or something. I have two of these ones that Damien from Brewpeg gave me. And if I put it this way up, I can see it's the same bolt pattern, but ooh, it's a very tight fit. It actually does fit. I've also just got to make sure these fittings are right and I can get the correct ones in. Part of me wants to make a little bracket just to lift it up a little bit higher. Otherwise it's right down here and you can't get your finger in for the drain or whatever. So. A little metal plate with four holes in it is all I've got to make. I think that's worth it. So I'll do that at home. Pete's here helping me get the uh, oil filter on. 
Pete helped uh, fix the holes in the deck before I went to the US. Oops, bit of noise. All right, this is the oil we're using, single weight 40W oil, which is apparently what you use in the warmer climates, 30W in colder climates. I'm gonna fill the oil filter, then we'll put the oil filter on the housing, and then attach the housing hoses to the inlet and outlet that Pete's cleaning up now. Pete had uh, given this one a hand brush in situ and then decided it wasn't good enough, rightly, <laughs> took it out, put this one on the wheel and gonna do the same for this one, so that'll be heaps better. Mm. There are our uh, inlet and outlet ports for the oil cooler, heading off to the oil filter. So a little bit of sealant on them and installed them. It actually turned out to be easier to do one at a time completely just so they weren't in the way of each other. These arrows on the housing, so in and out. So the out here obviously has to go to the in, which is labeled on the oil filter housing here. This is the Loctite 569 hydraulic sealant, good for all sorts of oils. All right, so out from there to the in from here, makes sense? Yeah, I think that's a good call, taking the other one off first. Apparently this engine takes 22 quarts, which is 20.8 litres. So I'm gonna put 20 litres in, which is the drum I've got here. And I'm also gonna add a zinc additive for the first sort of running period. So we'll figure out the difference. It should be so close, it's not funny by the time you put the additive in. I bought a little SAS oil pressure gauge. So Pete and I are just putting the sender in now, which goes in here, which is front of the engine and for us on the starboard side we need to use this adapter to go up from something of an inch to something else of an inch and there we go all finished ready to wire up next thing I did was plumb in my newly fabricated uh, coolant pipe so this particular pipe is a freshwater pipe, so it'll have the uh, corrosion inhibiting coolant running through it. So I've sort of painted the outside, but the inside's pretty bare still, which is fine, I think, for what it's for. All right, and here it is in all its glory. I'm single hose clamping all the cooling system, and anything that goes overboard to raw water, I'll double hose clamp. So that goes underneath. Thanks, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so take three on the O-ring fiasco. If you have this around the other way, water comes out of the freshwater side straight in there, straight out the hole. Doesn't even get close to an O-ring. This is the way I originally had it, which stops that happening. But there's nothing to hold a second O-ring in. Sorry, you can see I had a bit of sealant here because I put some on the O-ring thinking it was passing the O-ring, but it's not even going anywhere near the O-ring. To try and figure out how it should be, I jumped in the dinghy and headed out to Rick's boat, the Chief, which has the turbo Detroit diesel 871 in it. I figure I could see what the heat exchanger is like and maybe use that as a reference for mine, even though it's a different engine. No, different again. So it's not going to really help us. The mystery continues. Andrew said he's going to have a look at his and send me some photos, so we'll be able to confirm then. But I think I've got it dodged up enough for us to try and start it at least. And just for old time's sake, we're uh, having a look at Pedley's outboard. Here he comes with some spanners. Wasn't going into gear, but you can see down here this cable's supposed to be retained. 
inside this housing here so we'll just pop it off pop it in all be good what have, got that what have you got oh good man <laughs> make life easier aldi's best aldi's finest <laughs> might have to bump up the oh oh that was close here we cameraman pedals okay It's like a Detroit only time. <laughs> yes, but not half as fast. No, this only does about 40 knots. The Detroit will do at least 60. I think 40 knots might be a bit over exaggerated. So, what's it done? Oh, it's come out of that group. Yeah. How the hell does it do that? It's just come out of there. Just popped out. Yeah. It's popped out for a bite to eat. Do you want to put it in neutral or anything? No. Or whatever it's not in. There we go. There. Is that Back it? In. Yep. Bastard. <laughs> Fixed. What did that in the middle? <laughs> Busted already. Why can't my problems with my boat be simple? Yeah, I'm glad you spotted that. I looked at it, I just couldn't see it. Yeah, yeah. I knew it was cable. Cable. I've had this feeling. It's fixed. <laughs> Trevor. Trevor. Now we can drink beer properly. <laughs> the following morning I drove up to the workshop through all the uh, smoke from the bushfires that are in the area at the moment to meet up with Adrian. Adrian is a Detroit Diesel specialist mechanic and uh, really gave me some great advice on the engine. The first bit of advice he gave me is that the outer o-ring on the outlet of the heat exchanger is held in by that bronze end cap. That meant that I just had them on the wrong side. It turns out they're not identical. So I swapped them over and all was good. It did still leak a small amount though. And Adrian said, that's really common. So what you do is take a really small ball peen hammer, get in there and just start tapping away until the drip stops just so that you're seating the the heat exchanger core against the o-ring because they get a little bit deformed and the tiniest divot will just allow water to track past so just little taps around did that for literally no more than the video you're seeing here and it never dripped a drop after that so second piece of good advice cool so it was great meeting adrian and having him help out he knows these detroits inside out he's like the uh, Australian bus grease monkey, you know. What's also really good with Adrian is that he knows the marine side really well. The trouble with the manuals for these Detroits is they've got lots of detail about the engine itself, but as soon as you get into the marine stuff, it kind of just says, take it apart and put it back together in the reverse order. For example, with that heat exchanger, there's no diagram of it and there's no description of how it gets assembled and how it works. So really you are relying on it being done correctly so you can copy it was obviously my fault for reversing the end caps. I didn't notice they were different and I took them off nine months ago and it's just too long, you know, too long to have something apart before you put it back together. It was awesome getting the right advice, no big deal. I actually even had a couple more gaskets because they're a really common gasket. They kind of come in every kit. I bought a, you know, a full kit which had those gaskets in it. Then I also bought a heat exchanger kit which had those gaskets in it. So we got it back together, no problem. Unfortunately, after that though, things got a bit worse. Adrian went to rotate the blower by hand with the drive shaft out and it was quite stiff. He said, that's not right. He said, you should be able to almost flick it and you'll feel the air compressing and that's what stops it rotating, not any sort of bearing resistance or anything. So it wasn't doing that. And he said, look, that's just wrong. Something's up. So we took it off again uh, for like the third time or something and Adrian took it home. He took it apart and the rotors were actually contacting the end uh, and on top of that one of the bearing housings had been cracked so we've really got to find a new second hand uh, blower housing and he's going to put new bearings in and get it right so unfortunate but at least it'll be 100 percent once again when it comes back just one of those detroit specific things that he knows how it should feel and uh, has the right tools to get all the bearings and 
at the right depth and all that kind of thing. Once again, Detroit has a habit of not saying, sink this to so many millimetres, they just say, press it in with tool X, Y, Z, and that'll give you the right depth. And he's got all those tools. He's also going to rebuild the governor and the fuel pump for me, which hadn't been done. So that's great. You know, that whole module is where, you, you know, your governor and your fuel pump and everything is. That whole thing will come back 110%. We can bolt it on, fire it up. So, disappointing. More money, yes. Uh, but high confidence in being able to fire it up when we get it back. All right, so until then, I'm going to keep pushing on with things like engine mounts, deck repairs, all that kind of stuff. And then as soon as I hear back from Adrian, we'll uh, get this thing back together and hopefully fire it up. I didn't want to stick a camera in Adrian's face the first time I met him, so now we've kind of got to know each other. I might uh, sort of see how he feels about filming some of the work he does as well, and, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see what he's done, all the good stuff he's done. All right, we'll take care, and I'll catch you soon. See ya.